Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about my favorite books so far of 2022. From the point on that I'm filming this video, I've only read 24 books so I will be counting down from 5 to my number 1 pick so far this year. And let's just get on to number 5 and that is Charting Stars by Micheline Reichman. So this book I rated a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I remember enjoying the lighter tones that this adventure YA fantasy book brought me. And I think it was really nice to read a indie published book, which is not something I typically do since the majority of the books that I do read are traditionally published. So it was nice to pick up a indie published one. In Charting Stars, we're following Talia Benson, who one day wakes up in a field and she discovers that she's in this new world known as the Nine Realm. She is charming and ordinary and she enjoys the good things that she loves in life which include drawing, gazing at the stars, and enjoying a good cup of coffee. And the only thing that she's missing from Earth is her mother and her cats. Now in this fantastical world, Talia shows that she is more capable than she originally thought. We do get two different perspectives in this book, one being Talia and then the other being Jarrett, who is Talia's love interest. And their relationship is one of a slow growth, which I really appreciated. I really liked how we got to see the signs of an innocent crush being developed and how there's a lot of shyness to that and a lot of doubt. So that was a really nice different take on a romance in a YA fantasy book because in a typical YA fantasy book would be a lot of sparks and passion and all of that um, on the romance aspect in these type of books but I found it really refreshing to have that different kind of romance being portrayed here. My favorite part of the book has to be the attuned animals which are creatures or animals that have a really strong attachment to their person and essentially they act as familiars. My favorite one is Jared's attuned animal who is a squirrel and he's just so cute and sassy and I really like imagining how expressive a squirrel can be. Throughout this adventure we meet a lot of different characters and they each have their own unique backstory. At the end of the book, we see them grow closer together and discover what is going on in this land. I also really enjoyed learning about the different creatures in this book. So we have the attuned animals, we also have angels and different types of monsters. Overall, Talia and Jared, they learn to overcome their fears and they also learn quite important lessons along their adventure together. This novel is quite short, it's around 200 pages, but that didn't take away from me really enjoying learning about this world and also connecting with Talia and the friends that she meets along the way. So I really do enjoy this one and I recommend it. Number four, we have Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is the first book in a fantasy duology. In this one, we're following a protagonist, Shiori, who is the princess of Kiara and she has hidden magic which is then revealed on the day of her wedding but Shiori she doesn't really want to get married so she runs away and her magic flares. The main antagonist in this book is Shiori's stepmother who transforms her six brothers into cranes and threatens Shiori if she speaks of this to anyone she will kill off her brothers one by one. Shiori who is now forced to be a mute and she's also cursed with like a bowl on her head so that makes her unrecognizable. She goes on a quest across Kiara to help learn about how to destroy this curse and save her brothers and her kingdom from what seems to be a hostile takeover. So I absolutely love this book and how the writing itself was really easy to digest and imagine this world brought to life with its customs, food, and legends. And the writing also gives off a fairy tale atmosphere, which I really like. We see Shiori exploring her magic, which is animating paper cranes and she has other abilities too and we also learn about dragons along the way. So I know in the sequel we are focusing on dragons so I'm really excited to pick that one up which is releasing later this fall I think. But anyways, Shiori herself is a really strong protagonist and you learn to care for her along her journey and you want her to succeed and discover what is the truth of whatever's happening in her kingdom. There is the chosen one trope that made Shiori's character development a bit typical in a YA fantasy, but that didn't take away from Shiori realizing as not just being a princess of her Kiara, she learns the ways of her people and how they're actually living and understanding of where she comes from is at an advantage already since she's born into a royal family. 
but then that also brings her with a sense of duty and pride to protect her people. There is a romance in this book and it was a slow burn romance but it's not the focal point of this book and I think that was a good take for this particular series but I think maybe in the sequel we will get more romance in that case. Overall, I really love the Asian-inspired folklore and inspired kingdom from Six Crimson Cranes and this book really made me nostalgic for childhood Chinese dishes and I really like that aspect as well. So this fantasy has great action, character growth, and magical creatures so if you're looking for any of that, I would highly recommend this one. So going on to number three, which is an adult romance, and I chose The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, and I rated this one a 4.25 out of 5 stars. With a book like this that's super hyped up, I thought I would have some doubt about it being as great as it was, but the love hypothesis proved me wrong and I really did enjoy this romance. In this book, we are following Olive who is a PhD candidate and in order to do her research, she is currently working in an academia lab. Somehow, Olive finds herself in a fake dating situation with a young hotshot professor, Adam Carlson, in order to prove to her best friend Anne that she is actually dating someone. Surprisingly, Adam is agreeable to continue this fake charade of being Olive's fake boyfriend and he does a quite a good job of it. Adam is really supportive of Olive's work even at a science conference. Even though he is like an arrogant prick to everyone else except for Olive. First, what I really loved about this book is that it is a STEM romance taking place in a STEM setting and I don't think that's a typical backdrop for a romance novel so it was nice to see that type of romance take place. That made me really happy because I myself am in the science field so it's really, really nice to see this type of romance book in a science-y setting. <laughs> then the build-up of the romance was done really smoothly. You see on both sides of the relationship like some really small aspects of Adam and Olive being reluctant and not really so reluctant to participate in this fake relationship such as they have like really deep conversations and they're really fun banter with each other and they're like flirting which did bring up the chemistry that I felt between them both of them they do have their issues that they overcome somewhat by the end of the book Olive, she is really shy and she doesn't like to speak up about her work or stand up for herself but by the end of the book, she learns to overcome that and gain some confidence in her work as well as standing up and speaking up for herself. Adam learns how to be a little bit more considerate to others but he still has to work on that department but I think that's kind of part of his personality and also like unresolved trauma and all that but he does make some improvement by the end of this book. Also, do keep in mind that there is a instance of sexual assault in this book and I do think it was handled well but do keep that in mind before going into this book if that does make you uncomfortable. Our couple does overcome many obstacles and they really learn through this experience of what love and romance can be for them. Overall, it was a really entertaining relationship to read about. For this next book, I was debating which placement I should rank this book at but it's at number two and I put The Midnight Library by Matt Haig onto my number two spot and I did rate this one five out of five stars. I read this book really quickly because it has short chapters and the concept of maybe you might be able to choose another life to live is what captured my attention to even pick up this book in the first place. The Midnight Library takes place in the library between life and death and in this library the shelves are never ending and each book contains a life that you could have lived based on whatever decision branch you did not make. Our main character Nora is going through this really tough decision to choose if she should continue in the life that she is currently living or go back into one of these books in the midnight library and choose to live that life. I won't go too much in depth with this one. I think it's better if you just find out and read it yourself and discover what happens along the way. So this book is a magical realism book and I haven't read too many of them 
but I really did think this one was really easy to grasp the concept of. Although the messages of this book is simple, I do think it's really important to remember of living your life without regrets and to also live your life according to your own dreams and not the dreams of others. It's a simple life lesson, but I think it's one that people may overlook or their own mind like stops them from considering oh is this what i really want in life etc etc but i think it's a really nice book that made it to number two of my top five of 2022 and my number one pick so far of this year is house of sky and breath by sarah j mass so this is book two in the crescent city series and I was debating if I should put this at number two or number one, but just like thinking back now of all the books I've read and all the books on this list, I'm putting it at number one. <laughs> I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Before I get into more of my thoughts about this one, I did upload two full length videos on this book, one being a reading vlog and another being a full in-depth discussion review. So if you're interested in those videos and of my full thoughts on this book, I'll be linking it up above and in the description box below. So why did I choose this one as my number one pick? Um, I think it was just the emotional impact and as well just considering all the books I've read this year, I think this one just kept on coming back on top for me. I think this book was just filled with a lot of entertainment and it has really great payoff by the end of it, so I think that's what made me choose this one as number one. Don't get me wrong, there are some things in this book that I did not like, but I think at the end of the day, I just really enjoyed this one overall. So with going into this book, I remember I loved House of Earth and Blood, the first book in this series. So it wasn't much of a surprise that I did enjoy this one as well. If you don't know what this book is about, we're following Bryce Quinlan, who is a half human, half fae. She's living in this urban fantasy city, which is known as Crescent City or Unathian. I don't know how to pronounce that. But Bryce, she's quick witty, she's intelligent, and she somehow gets wrapped up into a murder mystery that she is then appointed to solve, and she's quite reluctant to do that. And along the way with that, she has help from the angel Hunt Athalar. With a book that's this massive, it's like 800 pages, we have multiple point of views with our main character Bryce still being our main POV but we also get multiple other POVs as well. I love that there was a continuing development of platonic relationships as well as romantic relationships, new and old. We get to dive in deeper with our characters and with their development and learning of their backstories. I did wish that there was less plot setup, but overall that did pay off in the end for those really great cinematic action sequences that I love how Sarah writes them. There were also intense revelations and secrets that were uncovered. The theme of finding your place within this world and for some of our characters, it's then now a new world. And exploring new magical creatures and new magical abilities was really fun. The main romance in this book with Bryson Hunt did continue on its expected trajectory and I'm not mad about that. I am really excited to see how the consequences of book two will play off in book three, especially with that wild ending. And I'll only say this, for this ending in book two, it was a lot of waiting and build up to reach to this point in the series. And I'm just so hyped up to see what will happen next. And I think I really do need to do a reread before the next book comes out. So as I mentioned before, House of Sky and Breath is a quite a lengthy book. There are slower parts, but despite that, I just kept coming back to this book in my mind and I think that's why I chose it as my top pick so far of 2022. Again, if you want to hear my full thoughts and reaction to this book, I will link that reading vlog and review video down in the description box below. So check those out if you are interested. Those are my thoughts at this point in the year, although I am filming this like in the middle of June. And so there's still a whole six months left in the year, so this list can absolutely change. And we'll see when we get to the end of the year of what changes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all had a good day. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.